Hello there folks, uh, people interested in sleep or those already doing um, sleep in their career. So I'm making this video as an update for 2021. I haven't posted um, quite a bit for some time because of COVID as well as just uh, moving back from Asia into United States. So anyway, I'm posting this because we just had a, a sleep conference uh, last January and there were some talks among sleep techs where they seem to have a negative um, perspective as far as the uh, industry is concerned, particularly uh, having a job as a sleep tech for the long haul. The reason being is that um, among other industries, medical industry is being um, threatened by um, artificial intelligence, automations, um, etc. So particularly um, sleep studies can now be done with just home sleep testing devices. And then devices, uh, CPAPs particularly, auto CPAPs and uh, etc. and the likes, can also auto titrate patients. And so it, it really begs the question, uh, do we really need sleep techs in the sleep labs to, we do, to be doing sleep studies? Or will we actually lose our jobs uh, eventually because everything will be done just by using the machines? Um, so even HSTs or home sleep studies um, have pretty good automatic um, scoring because it doesn't really have mm, much uh, to uh, much parameters uh, to incorporate such as the EEGs, EOGs, uh, etc. So home sleep tests um, mainly have three or four channels, um, particularly the respiratory channel and snoring, uh, pulse oximeter, and flow, right? And so their accuracy is pretty high even since 2006 when Micromesum uh, study, or better known as uh, apnea link, uh, is now uh, it has a had a pretty high um, accuracy or specificity. Specificity. Um, <laughs> anyway, so as uh, technology develops, then the accuracy of scoring, auto scoring, is uh, is also getting better. Um, but to that point. I do believe that there is a real threat in our jobs as sleep techs. However, it's mainly threatening the OSA types of uh, patient demographics. I think that you can never replace the skill set offered by uh, sleep techs in titrating um, bi-level types of patients. Patients with OSA and comorbidities such as central sleep apnea or hypoventilation. Uh, so what I advise techs to do is to become more proficient, um, more um, comfortable with uh, advanced titrations such as ASV, bi-level, bi-level with backup rate, um, and also pediatrics, you know. Um, if you are not comfortable with doing more than PSGs and um, just OSA types of titrations, then I really think that you are or we will be threatened by the automation because those are the exact patients that uh, auto CPAP can uh, can titrate outside of the sleep lab. Uh, but those with uh, hypoventilation and central apnea. Um, they must be titrated with the tech. Uh, um, however, on that same note, and I'm not trying to contradict what I just said, there are additional technologies that are being developed, such as um, Inspire uh, Remedy from Respicardia. Um, and so these devices are implants. These implants will target OSA, and Remedy, Remedy will target CSA. And they have uh, backing of clinical uh, studies that they do work. And so with that said, where does the tech 
um, fall into. Um, but right now, as we speak, I think there's still a lot to be developed in the um, involvement of um, of uh, implants. Uh, for one, is that not many people really want something inserted in their bodies. Um, there's still a pushback against patients, and then implants also are very expensive compared to CPAP, uh, okay? So with that in mind, I don't think that is going to be immediate that um, these de new devices will just take over all of our patient demographics. Um, there is another device that's coming out and it is for mild, uh, mild OSA and snoring, which is called uh, Excite OSA. And so, uh, to be upfront, I am a clinical specialist for that company. However, uh, we're talking about threat in our jobs. So, if you look at threat in our jobs, where does it really fall into? Um, it's now threatening the diagnostic portion. Uh, because due to COVID, it also pushed the relevance of home sleep testing to the forefront because not many labs or not many people would want to go to a sleep lab and to avoid contact as well as exposure to the virus and home sleep testing devices had been more prevalent and ubiquitous. So with that said, it might perpetuate even after the virus is uh, managed. I believe that that's what's already becoming the trend right now. And so with that kind of development, we have to look at it from that point of view that, okay, as a tech, the diagnostic portion is threatened. Uh, however, what else can we do? So with that said, um, additional skills such as skills on advanced titrations are definitely going to be helpful uh, getting our, your RPSGTs, uh, getting your CCSH, uh, which I don't have yet because I don't see much importance for it yet so far. However, probably in the future, I did take the CSE, a clinical sleep educator, because I do teach sleep uh, in Asia. Um, and apart from that, learning pediatric sleep is very important. Uh, and then trying to engage more of the daytime activities such as um, MSLT, MWTs, um, uh, which sometimes is not an option for us. But we have to look into avenues where we can uh, upgrade our skill levels, where we can be more uh, integrated into the bigger practice of sleep. You know, ability to know the technologies that we're incorporating into our practice, particularly in the diagnostic portion, as well as the uh, treatment. So treatment, um, it is already established that PAP is the gold standard, but with patients that has comorbidities, we are still using um, text to titrate patients uh, into by level or by pap um, st mode asv asv auto then you have the vaps or the volume of pressure support uh, ivaps and avaps there's a lot of patients uh, that needs to be treated still with those types of modes and so uh, being sleep techs being clinicians in the um, in the labs i think we do need to get more involved into that however we also need to encourage the doctors uh, to be sending more patients like that into the lab because the rest of the OSA uh, from mild to moderate to severe case uh, are being handled quite well with auto CPAP, um, auto bi-level devices. So with that said, there's less and less OSA patients that are actually going through the lab and just doing HST and then auto CPAP. And then their, you know, their pressures are titrated or adjusted by the DME or the distributors. 
I uh, hope this starts a conversation and if you have any questions uh, feel free to comment and of course as sleep text there's never ending um, learning in this process. I would love to hear from those who have other perspectives than mine. Thank you.